Perth preview, and uh, this is a questionable setup with these two blokes with their backgrounds. But uh, I'm joined by Toby, Perth Pro, and uh, Just Kieran. Let my friend get in the picture here. <laughs> very, very <laughs> questionable setups. And uh, Kev, another Perth uh, professional. Belmont, Toby, we're going back to the true rail. Uh, what can we expect from track pattern and also track conditions? A little bit of weather around. Uh, I'm expecting it to be wet as fuck. Um, they were calling it a seven on Wednesday. The times were being run like it was at least a nine, so they're just lying. They've got no idea. Um, so whatever track running is on Saturday, probably add one and a half. Um, <clears throat> they're supposed to get sort of somewhere between five and 15 mil tomorrow. Uh, that should be – no, it's actually a bit more than that tomorrow and then 5 to 15 on Saturday. They'd certainly want to cop the lower end of it on race day. Could get a bit like last week, but that'll just be wait and see because the bomb loves an each-way bet. Um, Do love an each-way bet. Tr- I think going back to the true pad should help the meeting get run, not necessarily that it would – do anything in terms of pattern that'll probably just be lane related once it gets this wet sort of just sorts the boys out from the men in terms of who handles the wet so pack your flippers kev any uh idea on track pattern yeah i think it's just going to be an absolute bog again this track is nearing its end date uh for the season so Mm. it just continues to play a lot heavier um, and tougher to run than usual. I think you're probably looking for fitter horses to, on Saturday um, than those fresh, but at the same time, there's some fresh horses that are in that handle the conditions pretty well, and um, I wouldn't be surprised if they they pop up. Mm. <clears throat> you have to stop looking at you blokes with your background screens. I'm getting a bit warm and fuzzy. I might have to duck off to my bedroom. Uh, <laughs> Race one for the three-year-old set weights and penalties over 1,200. And I'll throw to Kev first. Uh, smooth move. He's a trial perv. It's opened up $2.50 for Simon Miller. Uh, God Makers, $5. Battle Commander, 6 Mean Machine, six fifty, And uh, Keep Ida a Mystery, uh, $8. I've got... Two potential leaders, but bits of speeds from the outside gates. Uh, what are you expecting in terms of speed and ability from this uh, debutant here, Kev? Oh, look, I'm expecting that shoot mover will probably lob midfield. Um, you know, he's drawn drawn pretty soft, so he's not going to be too far back. Um, look, I wanted to be on him before the Perth Stakes, and he was scratched race day from memory. Um, mm-hmm. His trials leading into that were awesome, um, and then he was he was tipped out straight away. Um, he's trialed now before um, this now do, debut run, and I I I want to stamp him the capital M word to be honest. But like, if he handles the if he handles the heavy going, um, smooth mover is an absolute fucking moral. Um, yeah, I think he I, I think. You know, from this stable, they've, they've been patient with him. Um, they've drawn soft. The horse just looks like he's got a lot more talent than most of these, which have been around for a little bit now. Um, mm. Goldmaker continues to run good races, but Barrier One's probably not ideal. Main Machine, and I feel like I'm just beating up on DMAC horses at the moment, but Main Machine is just such an underperformer. Um, you know, he's taking up a chunk of the market as well. Battle Commander will be there on speed, but yeah, I think if this horse runs to the ability that I think he's got and that he's shown at trials, I don't think they'll um I don't think they'll be winning. Uh, they'll be beating him. So just wins. Does seem a key yard horse, uh, obviously on debut, but also if it can handle the conditions. As you referenced, the purse stakes, like what what was it? Third line of betting. Bus yeah, it's a dream a lot. Would have like, got some of mine. Can, Absolutely, and can I'm, go those couple of horses, and I'm pretty happy to say that I'm I'm glad that he was scratched. That yeah, day. <laughs> because me too. I, he probably runs second to Bustling, who Wasn't is winning. now like what short That's double figures for an Everest or some shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> officially been crowned yeah. WA Horse of the Year. For his Has he really? Well, that doesn't yeah, take much. Last boys. week they, they had the awards. He was two year old of the year and 
You know, Amelia's Jewel got crowned four-year-old and up horse of the year. She's done a big job. Has done a big job. Pretty, uh, Toby, what pretty are you good expecting? Pretty good for a group two fillies and mares winner. Yeah, not bad. Um, yeah. I was expecting, expecting? Keep, I was expecting Keep It A Mystery to lead. I was expecting Battle Commander to be in the uh, OSL early, giving cover to Schmoove Mover 1-1, one, one, and then be, be interesting. Battle Commander chose to sit a couple of starts ago, and then last start was pretty aggressive to get to the front, so it would be really interesting if <clears throat> he wanted to hand away the OSL spot if Mean Machine or Promising came looking for it. I didn't think they would. I thought that left Schmoove Mover 1-1, one, one, which is a great spot. Um, and then it really makes it hard for Mean Machine, who will have to be a long way back. Uh, just think he's a big hole in the market at $6, given he hasn't performed badly, but just hasn't shown anything to say that he'd be competitive against the best of these with the map he's likely to get. <clears throat> like Goldmaker, uh, now that he's got a gate and up to 1200 but think he bumps into a pretty smart one in Schmoov Mover. Mm. But... Yeah, just a little query on how well he'll handle the wet. Like, he looked quite wet the last set of trials he was in, so probably should be fine, but can be hard to get really enthused on these Yeah, tracks. and also sort of wasn't tested in the trials as well, so um, maybe we'll yes. learn something on Saturday. Uh, race two of the 1,000, the one Metro win, 60 and up. Uh, Brave Centurion, $2.60, Made in Mexico, $3, which looks like it might be better suited to Pinjara if it goes to the outside fence. Uh, Snippy yeah, Witch. I reckon it would have been very much better suited if it got to the outside fence at Pinjara, yeah. Snippy Unfortunately, Witch. it got nowhere near it. <laughs> oh, look, Made, made in Mexico, it's going to come out, right? It has to come out. I'll, well, I'll, I got told that it wouldn't even come out if it won, um, wouldn't even stay in if it won softly. So, yeah, yeah. I'd suggest he'll be a scratching. Yeah, can't so win, Brave Centurion. Anyway. <laughs> uh, anyway. You're brave. <laughs> Speaking of brave, Brave Centurion, uh, there's, a, there's a few of these favourites on the card, which is sort of putting a little bit of a picket fence together. Uh, brave Centurion will be um, in the red. You'd expect Made in Mexico will come out. Uh, Snippy Witch, which is currently 550 and Salt Lake Shake, $13. I'll obviously trim in um, with the scratching of Made in Mexico. I thought Salt Lake Shake would just lead on its ear um, and not much pressure in the race. Yeah, should Made in Mexico come out, I'd, I'd say she'll, he'll be straight to the front with the shades on, back to 1,200. Um, thought Bravo Centurion probably got to be 1-1. Now he may get stuck OSL. Not that, that will necessarily disadvantage him, but... Um, look, he'll be very short now. Uh, he's put together two really good wins, <clears throat> but from the front where he won't be here. And last, although I, I think he might be better with a bunny to chase, he looked to just get a little bit lost last start and uh, tired a tiny bit late at twelve hundred. But whether he was waiting for them or whether he was tired, don't really know. But look, he looks should made in Mexico come out. Um, looks an obvious favourite now. He'll be very short for a horse that I thought might have just been coming to the end of his prep. I know he's not the soundest horse, so I don't think they'll get too many more runs than this out of him, especially on these really wet tracks. Um, look, hard to take on, but hard to um, bet against as well, I thought. Does seem the obvious horse to beat here, Bravo Centurion, Kev, but the data suggests that a few in this race can actually measure up. Uh, how are you seeing it? Yeah, look, I had Bravo Centurion on top, even with Made in Mexico staying in the race. I thought Salt Lake Shake and Made in Mexico would probably beat each other up and that would play into his sort of into his hands. But, you know, with... Salt Lake Shake probably getting to the front by itself. Um, it might even make Bravo Centurion's job a little bit harder. Um, he was a dominant winner first up. Um, it'd be interesting to see whether or not they'd go and sit outside of Salt Lake Shake. Do you think they would, Toby? I didn't really see any others. I don't think they're going to be desperate to get across because I think they'll concede that they probably can't. And then yeah. there's sort of nothing for them to take cover on if they wanted to sit, so... Yeah, I, I think the the horse that that interests me the most out of this, and whilst a thousand meters is probably on its shorter side, 
Frappuccino brings a strong SP profile to this. Um, obviously, full relation to Maracino, so sort of expect him to get out over further. Um, yep, but definitely. you know, I think yeah, I think he's going to be one that I'm looking to follow this prep. Um, but you know, in the in terms of this race, I think you know, Bravo Centurion sort of warrants favoritism but it just depends how short he's going to be when made in mexico comes out yeah, it'll be interesting how much they apply percentage towards the favorite mm. uh race three over the mile for the three old and up uh no metro win in the last year uh super romany for pike uh current favorite thirty dollars 20 hemlock stone uh three dollars 60 and burn bray also three dollars 60 uh thorough good who could be He's likely a leader, uh, $13. Um, two potential leaders, like uh, Vasilev and Thorogood from the inside gate, Toby. Uh, are they the most likely speed influences in the race? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> I thought Thorogood would be sitting. I thought Vasilev would be pretty aggressive here. And then <clears throat> there wasn't really a brace or so whether Thorogood would pop off from that point or whether our ultimate command might be in that spot. I wasn't sure. I thought it was sort of a tricky map mm. behind that, just with Vasily of leading, but then I wasn't sure who was your OSL horse. Yeah, so is this potentially a, a slowly run mile and um, a couple um, of these I that aren't proven at a mile might uh, come to the fore a little bit? I didn't think Vasily would want to walk them. Okay. Um, I thought he, I don't think he'll go over the top, but I, I thought he said it. Um, genuine tempo. Uh, and uh, what did you find in the race? Oh, n- nothing really. I thought the three favourites were your three most obvious. I thought they were all short enough. Yeah, like Super Romney wasn't particularly well suited to being on the inside last start, but they rolled along, which would have helped. And Burnbray went straight past him. I didn't think Burnbray would do that first start for Tony Shriscari first up at 1,600. Um, whether she's a bit flatter now because she's a real staying type, whether she can reproduce that same effort second up at 1,600 on a really wet track, mm. I don't know. And then you've got Hemlock, <clears throat> Hemlock Stone, who is a horse that I think he's better suited at 1,400, tucked away and needing luck. I don't think he is cat. He's, he's certainly not going to be able to, run his best races, making wide runs from the back. I think he's your real William Pike, get lucky, get through um, and sprint really hard late kind of horse. So uh, I thought they were all little knocks on all of them for different reasons. Um, I thought Hemlock Stone was probably your, your, your pick of the three just with the form behind Deferred and Tenacious Reward, which we'll talk about later mm. um, versus some of the other grad form that Burnbray and Super Romney come through, but again, I it's, have it's my a, concerns about him. It's a really happen. interesting field from a review standpoint when you've got Super Romney, which stood in the gates, lost a length, gets beat less than a length, and you've got Burnbray, which has essentially done the same thing, gets beat less than a length. Um, do you want to take under four dollars for those horses when they likely are best horses in the race, coming off those? Last up patterns, I'm not really sure. Uh, Kev, what did you think of this race? I didn't like the look of this race at all, so I have absolutely no opinion. Good. Uh, can't lose. Can't lose that way. Probably can't lose. Thing for me at the moment, it does make honest. it very hard. Uh, race. <laughs> if there's someone that could find a way to lose, it'd be me, though. Yeah, great. <laughs> and yeah. me. Makes some sense. <laughs> Uh, race four over the 1300. This is another no metro win the last year, 58 plus. Uh, Watch me rock again for Pike, uh, three dollar favorite. Uh, Love a session, four dollars 60. Young up girl, sevens, uh, universal flare, nines, king's artillery, ten dollars, double figures of rest. And most of the speed for me was drawn outside gates, uh, more special and universal flare. And little bits inside with Yelling Up Girl and uh, Bring the Bling. Uh, how did you see this map, Toby? Yeah, I thought <clears throat> Yelling Up Girl and Bring the Bling had looked to be handier. I, I thought Universal Flare, the way they've been riding her, would be 
pretty handlebars down to get to the front. She'll get her preferred surface. She drops really sharply in grade um, coming out of 66s and 72s and has been dropping points as well. Gets the claimer back on here to really keep her in with a winnable weight. I thought um, thought she looked a pretty good chance if the rain really does come. which will be interesting. I, I think two starts ago or three starts ago, she was a really good run first up. Two starts ago, she worked a little bit too hard and then last start was probably on the drier side for her liking um, and a much trickier race. Uh, watch me rock. Probably your obvious favourite. He's got a very strong SP profile, despite last start where he drifted really markedly. And mm. I was willing to take him on with the um, apprentice riding him just because of the way he'd travelled in some of his races. His previous prep just had really come off the bridle early and struggled to get back on. And I thought that might make it really hard for the young girl versus he'd been being ridden by William Pike. And he travelled up much stronger and only just got over Miss Storm. I think it'll be advantage for Pike going back on. I think he prefers these wetter tracks based on the results and Definitely. he'll be in what is very possibly going to be the best part. You know, it'll be one of two extremes generally. It'll either be strongly inside or strongly outside. Um, there's generally no evenness um, when these really wet tracks come about. Yeah. Um, Love of Flair obviously has to take up a percentage of your market. She has well and truly run out of chances for me. Um, and then you, you get to a few horses like Yelling Up Girl was a good run from the back of the field. That's not her go. She can be closer. Um, even horses like Requisition coming through that uh, Russian sniper race, which was pretty good for West Bay Platinum class. Um, yeah, interesting little race. But I think... I'll just be looking for the rain for Uni Flair at this stage. A very interesting race. And um, I was listening to Warren Huntley when he was doing, um, what have I been, mean, Packham or Ballarat earlier in the week. And he said, uh, Blake Shin on is the gear change in itself. It feels like that with this favourite, Watch Me Rock, uh, Sea Keeper off, W Pike back on. That is a gear change in itself. Uh, Love a Session and Canny Jack. They've got extraordinary numbers next to their last art figures uh, relative to this race profile. Uh, is that is that accurate? Do you think they have? I was just a about fair to assessment. Ask, I was just about to ask about Canny Jack. Mm. That c- comes out of that estimator race. It's a, it's a big figure. Big figure. Mm. Yeah. Um, look, I know that even the stable weren't that confident with him going in, but. I think he, he just loves the wet. He got a really yeah. wet track at Pinjarra and he stayed in a decent spot. Mm-hmm. I just I, – I, the numbers, I don't know how accurate they are. You know, it's really hard when the um, stewards and stuff have no idea about track rating um, and just – or that or blatantly lie. Um, well, these it, are based off track speeds, like not assessed on the stewards' oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll – Look, it looked pretty good. I didn't think it was extraordinary looking at it to me based on other times on the day, but I thought he was sort of, if he could reproduce it on another wet track, he'd be a chance. I I don't think he's quite up to the best of these, but he could run another, you know, sort of fourth, fifth, length and a half off them, go into something easier and win it. Yep, fair enough. Uh, Kev, how did you find this race? Yeah, look. Canny Jack was pretty much the only one I was really looking at. Um, you know, it'd be <clears throat> Alex Hearn back on a Saturday. It's, um, after what, how, how long? Yeah, how long did he have off, Toby? Uh, was it was a good nine pump? years? Yeah. Who, who did we talk about uh, pre before we jumped on one day? Was that C Nickel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was average PSP of about one hundred and fifty-eight dollars <laughs> or something. So that's good. Uh, yeah, on, sorry, I didn't. No, nah, 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 Alex, nah. he's he's trying to grab opportunities with both hands. He and abs- and so he should. Uh, he's another, another riding another already down, riding fifty-four on the Saturday early in the program for Sue Olive. Like he, yeah. I know it. He said he got out as high as ninety kilos. He's got down to walking around fifty-six and ride fifty-four. He's he's not. He's working hard for these opportunities, especially in the middle of winter where it's a bit harder. To I, don't, I don't think people realise 
the extent of the effort to do that as well. Like I've oh, got a couple of mates that are yeah. jockeys, and well, to, for them to drop a kilo your body over the course of a week is, um, you know, even a, a, a kilo when you're 56 is a massive effort for them. So, um, yeah, that's that's a push of the bloke. Good on him. Well done. Yeah. So, look, I, I think, I'm look, that's probably, if anything that I'm interested in would be it. Um, comes out of that estimator race, that estimator before winning that race at Pinjara, come out of the race behind Desert Nymph, which has formed, been franked, obviously, on Wednesday. Um, so you can draw a few lines into that. Um, like Toby said, though, whether or not it's good enough to run against some of these that are at the top of the market is another question. Um, but, yeah, look, other than that, the, the race is, you know, it gives me a bit of a stink, to be truly honest with you. It wouldn't surprise yeah. me if there's a big result. Like Very even, you know, and, you know, if I'm going to make a case for um, for Kenny Jack, you know, Penny and the Queen comes out of similar races behind Desert Nymph and Estimator. So, yeah, it, it's just, think, yeah, it's just a bit of a stinky race. I think you can ca- make a case for every run in this field. Like it, when yeah. you review it, no matter what won the race, you could look back at it and say, I understand why well, that's one. Yeah, which I not really bring the don't. bling. I'm going to rule out. I'm going to be really brave here. I'm going to rule out bring the bling. Fifty is done. Drawing the line. Uh, race five over the fourteen hundred uh, sixty-five plus. I uh, deferred. Looks to keep putting a picket fence together. Uh, it's two dollars. Uh, Manovideria for Pike six. Tenacious Reward six. Uh, Jelly can run. And Wango Road, both around nine dollars, and there's absolutely no speed in this race. Uh, find your leader. Uh, take us away, Toby. I have no idea. I actually was trying to work out if they might just go forward with the third. I thought they probably right wouldn't. Right, best horse in the race. Well, she's just going so well. I don't think they want to ruin how well she's gone settling because the one time she went forward albeit it wasn't a great day to be on speed, she sat OSL and got beat um, in a maiden. So yep. I thought they might want to avoid that. I thought I don't know, the Spruker probably after that looks the most likely one for me to kick through and hold the front or even I thought Jelly can run. I just had no idea. I don't know how this race will be run. I don't know what the map will look like, but I think Deferred probably wins as yeah. long as it's not mad fence, which I don't think I don't think it will be. Uh, at this stage of the day, you'll know. Um, I thought she was really, really good last start. She went and used her out the gate, and then he grabbed hold, and then he tried to ride her into a spot again, and then he grabbed hold again. And then she still let down with a really nice turn of foot to go past Tenacious Reward, who's no superstar, but he's he's a, got a handy turn of foot for 60-plus, 60 66-plus grade. Um, and she went past him, so mm. I thought that was a really good sign for her going forward. Again, might be tricky in having to make up his mind early from the gate here, but I think she's the clear best horse in the race. She's in form at the right time. She's loving the wet. Loves the um, wet. Found it really hard to go past her. It's a strange, uh, strange <laughs> race, Kev. Like, um, you know, you've got deferred, uh, went up to the 14 last start, won really well, but you've got some... Okay, horses that are starting to get up towards their best distances, not quite on Saturday here with uh, the second and third and fourth favourite. Yeah. I always get a bit icky when I see no lead in the race and I see Pike on the second favourite. It yeah. just screams Pike. He, I... he just sums the tempo up better <laughs> than anyone else and he yeah. just seems to get away with it too often than not. And I completely agree. Like, I... That being said, Deferred is a deserving favourite, and I was pretty I was pretty surprised that there was black odds about it early on. Um, mm-hmm. I think you know she's a mare in form, so you saw it's one of Perla's pearls. So you know, like <clears throat> you, it's hard. She's hard to take on, um, but you know, Manavendra, like you said, it spikes my interest um, more than what it should. At six dollars, you know, like it was really sound to the line over twelve hundred. Steps up to fourteen. Um, Pike sticks, which is always a good sign. Um, I feel like maybe if it's 
by this time of the day, it's a bottomless track. It could keep, could get her undone. Um, um, but, you know, I think it's $6 versus dollar ninety five. It's probably the bet in the race um, with obviously no no extreme confidence. Um, and like I said, like deferred looks your deserving favourite and probably makes it four out of four this prep. But, you know, if you can find some chinks in its armour, then Manavendra looks like the likely one to pick it off. I looked at it like a key yard race uh, from Toby's standpoint so. because... Um, if you don't spend a lot of time in the yard looking at horses, this won't make a lot of sense. But Deferred might look too fit, like it's at the end of its prep on Saturday. Yeah. And there's a I chance still, that... They were talking, though. I heard, I listened to the interview from last start just to hear what Chris had to say in terms of whether he would, had t- t- spoken about having to make multiple runs, and he did, which I found interesting. But as well, they spoke about potentially going to a Hannon's with her, so I... Don't think she's really truly wow. at her top yet, and that she's not a super. Really she's not a super heavy filly either. Like the really heavy, big-bodied horses are the ones that I don't like as much on the wet. And she's not that. Yeah. She's a bit leaner, more athletic, like a like her full relation or half relation in Magnificent Andy. How, how far away is the Hannons? Is it a month away? Uh well, it's be the week before Grand Final. Yeah, six week weeks. after Grand Final. I don't know, one of one the other. Uh, well, well, there you go. Weeks, to- yeah. Toby clearly knows uh, how to look at a horse in the flesh, but uh, the Pike runner is very interesting how much improvement yeah. it's potentially taken as, you know, has a six potentially tapered off as well, but based on what you've said there, uh, unlikely, but uh, a very interesting race. Uh, race six over the 1,200. Uh, Braden Gass, runner, $3, uh, son of the boss, Russian sniper for Pike, Four dollars under the influence, uh, five fifty lenience. A little bit of uh, some of the boss going forward, but probably four to five other bits of speed in the race here, Toby. Uh, how do you expect this race will be run? I thought he'd get there, son of the boss. I thought he'd get to the front. I thought Excel Train had come out and want to be handy, potentially get left in the breeze. I think that depends on what lenience he wants to do. They went. Forward last start when Bayes did missed away and sat OSL and went really good. So I thought from the outside mm. gate, rather than going back to last, I thought they might look for that spot again. I thought if they came out looking for it, Exel Train first up would give it away and just take this hit 1-1. Mm-hmm. Um, from there, you've got under influence, depending on how it jumps, is either leaders back or three back fence. It depends on whether um, Pike wants to go to the fence on, uh, on Russian Sniper. sniper. Yep. Um, which you would think be interesting up in the race. That much gate speed to sit leaders back? Well, I think it just depends on. Hasn't done it recently. It, well, but it, it depends on how quickly Son of the Boss gets. Like, whether, if Exel Train gets there quick enough, it might even be leaders back. Um, mm. And then Son of the Boss crosses it. But yeah. I think All it right. depends on what people want to do. Um, it, it could end up there. Um, I found it really interesting under influence coming up to 1,200. He's been so – he's won there before and been competitive, but he's just been going so well over 1,000 metres. I thought they might have just nailed him out as a 1,000-metre horse now. Yeah. And I also didn't like barrier one, considering he could be three back the fence on a really wet track at a trip that he's not used to at the moment. I thought it would be completely buried from that draw. No chance. That's why I thought that was- Flop out to the back and then and circle. Which, yeah. I that, that's in the market. That's, yeah. I thought it was Probably. an easy pen. Easy pen. No, nah, um, I'm not willing I'm not willing to pen it, but well not like but I'm obviously not gonna but, get it but short. How but, does it win the race from the map that it's likely to present? Uh if it's a run on down the center track and they do suck all the way out the back and loop them. And fan off the. But it's tricky. And, it's tricky, yeah, yeah. obviously. Yeah. yeah. I think the small field helps for that if that's the option he goes yep. with. Fair point. Yeah. Very fair point. Um, yeah. For me, look, I, I went for two horses that are going to be what I think will be at the opposite ends of the race. That'll be Son of the Boss. Um, he's been brilliant in his first two runs as prep. Like they went lickly split early last start. 
Um, Say that again, Kev. <laughs> no, I can't have even if I tried. <laughs> they went, um, they went bare fair liquidity split. <laughs> <laughs> um, and look, I think he was in warranted to to compound late to Silver Eye and Sentimental Bell. Um, obviously, the Sentimental Bell didn't entirely frank the form on Wednesday, but I think you could probably forgive that run for her, considering the race was moved to a midweek program, and that and the track is just absolutely just absolutely cast at the moment. So I think you could yeah. probably forgive that. Um, some of the boss will be on speed, and I think he'll be there for a long way. And the other one was under influence. Um, that win last start was was superb. You know, he cut down Songer with every stride, which I thought Songer had that race shot to pieces. Um, to Toby's point, you know, barrier one certainly not ideal um, with his racing pattern as well. But just misses a start every time, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, which I, I think you know over twelve hundred meters and barrier one that probably could aid him. That 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 forces Chris's hand to go back and loop, um, and with that, so it's destined with, to loop in that spot. Yeah, yeah, yep. it, yeah. And with the small field, I think looping looping at a nine, a, the eight other horses makes it a little bit easier for him as well. Yeah. So you're saying it's um, miss a start regularly, but it's got the usual racing pattern of being. Back in, you know, half, having to catch yeah. up to the field over a thousand meters, and now this is only twelve hundred meters, and yeah. maybe there is a you know, potential they get off the inside, and the races uh, or the gaps might present. Yeah. Uh, race seven over thirteen hundred, another pretty weak race, really. Uh, one metro win, uh, sixty plus. Uh, another one that's looking to put the picket fence together is so so lucky for Chris Parnham. Uh, it's three dollars. Uh, Cruise to victory for Pike four dollars twenty. No brain in nines. Uh, Siberian Siren uh, eleven dollars and double figures. The rest uh, I had a solid enough tempo, but no absolute leader. I had five to six pieces of speed uh, going forward in this race. Toby, uh, what did you expect in terms of the map? thought <clears throat> with the apprentice going on Siberian siren I thought they would look to lead no brainer might look to kick up but it may not have the speed as well mm. I, I probably I match Siberian siren in front uh, cruise to victory probably taking a trail on something most likely border force and then sort of everything just files back from there leaving so so lucky probably just off midfield. She's been really good in her two wins. She's at three wide, no cover, um, and made a run, a long run, really impressively on debut. And then last start, didn't travel all that well into the corner and then stuck the hard inside, which everyone had been avoiding all day. So I think it <clears throat> by that point in the day, I've been told that part of the track had been freshly rolled. So I, I think it was probably the second best part of the track to the outside fence. So... It's still a good effort because it's definitely not as good as the outside, but she was never going to get there. So they tried something different and she won quite well. Um, look, she looks capable of taking this step. Do I want to take $2.80 to find out? Probably not. Um, Siberian Siren has looked to be just not as impressive as I thought she'd be in both her starts this prep, but she's got a good SP profile and, Leading here with the apprentice, if it's an, an okay spot, could work out well for him. Uh, no brainer. Was unbeaten up until last start. Didn't quite get things run to suit him. Won't probably again here if he is crossed. Um, and then you've got Cruise to Victory, who's going really well for Team Williams. Lobs another nice spot. Pike, etc., etc. Just looked a pretty messy race to me. Where so so lucky is probably you probably deserves to be favourite, but maybe just a little bit short at this stage. Yep, definitely fair enough. Uh, Kev, I've got some data that suggests that one punch and uh, Siberian Siren should, or oh, and No Brainer should be hard in the market here. Uh, do you give any of those three any chance? Um, I don't give one punch a chance. That's probably going to bite me in the ass, but uh, just I'm probably waiting for it to get on a dry deck, to be honest. Um, yep. 
think Albeit, they are too by the sound of it. Yeah. Um, so had three goes on the heavy for three placings. Uh, yeah. And yet, and yet okay. they want to say that he's just better on the soft. So. Yeah. Look, I, I am loving what So So Lucky's done in its first two starts. Um, dominant winner on debut, backed it up at Belmont. Um, like Toby said, took the shortest way home. And you know, one with dominance in that in that particular race, stepping up in grade, coming it out of the monstered maiden. them on debut cap. It oh, monstered them. It was unbelievable. I, I think this horse, to be truly honest, will be playing a part during summer. Yep. Whether yeah. or not whether or not what race that is, I don't know. Um, but I think she's got a stack of ability. Um, yep. You know, every like Toby said, every single jockey from race one. They hadn't even seen how the track was playing to start with, but they wanted to get off that fence straight Outside away. Outside fence. Yeah. Um, I remember it vividly. Race one, I think it was Brad was on the leader and just went straight to the middle, straight to the middle. And then Chris sort of just bides his time. Like Toby said, took a little bit to get going. Um, but, you know, once she hit her stride, she shot that race to bits. Um, I don't really see any reason for me to hop off. I think Chris just camps off the front pack and, Brings her to, into the race. Probably the middle of the track's going to be the best part of the ground by this time of day, and I wouldn't be su- surprised if she makes it three in a line. Um, she's my clear on topper. Um, I've got a bit of time for Invincible Ruby. Um, was really good last start. Um, only got out late, late in the straight after playing bumper cars. Um, but she swims. Anything and- you'd like to say about Brandon Louis, just quickly? Brandon. Uh, Good, good evening, Gun jockey. Brandon. Good evening, Brandon. <laughs> good evening, Moving Brandon, on. if you're listening. <laughs> Moving on. Um, but, yeah, I think Invincible Ruby runs. It can't, I wouldn't be shocked if she can run another top three finish, but she runs into a pretty smart one. Uh, race eight, the feature, the idyllic Prince Stakes, uh, over the 1,300, but Search and Rocks, uh, $3.20. Uh, Vela Road. <laughs> I can't believe Bella Road's still going around. It feels like it's about 15 years old. And I, remember it is. It's, I remember it's Magic Million wins, one of the greatest days on track. Oh, I'm Just stunned the vibe, it's still going The vibe around. on track was so good. Uh, the, the internet reception uh, on track was not so good. There was no internet. It was dollar. Correct. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> That's what happens uh, once Pinjara gets more than 20 people. Correct. It becomes a third world country. Uh, I'll tell you a story about Pinjo after this. Um, it it used to be completely barren. Uh, Velo I don't Road go tri- anymore. I, on oh. Pinjo Cup Day, Sprint Day, Magic Moons, I don't go because you can't use your phone. No one wants to hear this drool, but you should see the telly setups. It was black and white. This is like 10 years oh, ago. Yeah. No, I, a I, of, I, a I bought a me. TV off my Nana <laughs> when I was about 12 and it cost me $100. And she gave it to me. It was black and white. And then I look back and I'm going, no, no, you fleeced me. $100 for a black and white TV when I was like 11. Pinjara's the only place where video didn't kill the radio star. No, but they still had those like <laughs> the portable black and white TVs that I bought off my name when I was 10, like in the cage box behind the prison screen. Pin- yeah. Pinjara still had them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're behind the times. Anyway, sorry for that. Uh, race eight, uh, idyllic print stakes, uh, listed race, wait for age, uh, pretty sharp race, really. Uh, Search and Rocks, $3. Uh, Vela Road, $3.40, $3.60, best available. Saloon Bar, $5. Uh, Vast Art, eight. Uh, double figure the rest. Uh, Ginger Bake is the shortest of those that are double figures. And it looks a very, very average tempo. This doesn't look like. Much of a form race, really, going out of it. But uh, how do we find the winner here, Toby? I've got search I would like going to, to I'd, lead. I'd like, to, I'd like to start and then I'll let... Because I'm going to narrow it down to two and then by the sounds of it, Kev's going to narrow it down to one and then I might tell him he's wrong, but I might not. Um, search and Rocks, Bella Road, they sit one, two and they run one, two. They're, okay. they're, on, they're the two wait for age horses against horses that should be in hand... That would, get less than the minimum in a handicap against them or should get less than the minimum in a handicap against them. Yep. They're a bunch of 100 riders against 80 riders 
and they carry the same weight and they're going to be the two map horses. They both get through the wet. Fellow Road had a bad prep last prep. That was with bar plates on. They come off here. He gets blinkers on. He had them on for about four starts four years ago. And when they first went on, he won a 1,100 metre sprint race in summer, sitting, I think, three wide, no cover. Probably should have gone back and checked that. But I remember it was Chloe as a party's first stakes, when if that counts. So it's probably three wide, no cover. Oh, that's rude. Oh, that's unnecessary. Oh. That's unnecessessary. <laughs> Hey, she won. She, sal- she won it. She saluted. It's fine. Um, I I think there's some chance that being the interesting tactic thinkers that they are, the Taylors may let Bella Road go to the front. Um, wow. And I think that would be very silly. But yeah, so definitely. They pay, the, they pay the bills, so they do what they want. I've I think they sit one, two. I think the leader of whoever leads becomes the hardest one to beat. Um, the Whoever has to sit OSL can still beat the other, but it just becomes harder. Um, Valorod's recent trial was really sharp for a, an old boy to beat a genuine 1,000-meter horse in Indy Ruler and go past him. He is pretty yep. no, no shades that are going on for race day. He won this race last year first up, beating Nero Dio and Fanta. Um, who are probably similar in terms of opposition to Search and Rocks. Search and Rocks stretched the neck of Western Empire um, a couple of months ago in a 1,400 metre and then was in the worst part of the track uh, when third in a Hyperion, which are the two other weight for age races. I've, I've said enough. I've, yeah, I'd, I'm not necessarily sold on having a bet either way until I'm sure of what will be done tactically. Um because I think, as I said, whoever leads should be a favourite. Could be another key yard race, though, to be fair. Like, these horses are both yep. first, first up. Uppers. And we might have an established pattern on the day. Um, you know, search and rocks. If it kicks up and leads, Kev. Like, Cannot lose. Does it, does it not just win? Just wins. Um, I think it's like Toby hit the nail on the head. Whoever leads is more than likely going to be trading very short in the straight. Um, yep. I think Search and Rocks goes to the front. She swims. She handles Belmont. She took Western Empire to a lip and sprint. They gapped third. He was cut down late by Magnificent Andy and Let's Gallivant, um, who have held their own in featured races in the past. Um, I think, you know, given that she's forward enough, she'll she'll take this out. Um, in a race named in the honour of a former Jim Taylor superstar in Idyllic Prince. I'm very keen on her. I think, yeah, if they lead, she wins. That's it. I tend to agree, and it might be a pre and, pre and bit post. Like made in, a bit like Made in Mexico would have in race two. If he'd started, would have led in one. Just needs to find Pinjara oh, in the outside fence. It does. Uh, it really does. Race nine of the sixteen hundred. Uh, I haven't done the map on this race, so I'm relying on Toby. Lots yeah. of speed, lots and lots and lots. Well, of speed. I can see my filthy, filthy friend, filthy habits here. So uh, sensational, Ooh, three dollars forty. Uh, filthy habits and Falcon Trader, seven dollars fifty. Uh, Playhouse Patron nines, Classic Road tens, double figures rest. Uh, so we're sixteen hundred for the seventy-two plus Raiders. Last race of the day. What's going to happen here with the profile of the race, Toby? Uh, filthy habits, fresh off coming home in forty-two seconds on a bottomless <laughs> thirty-nine. Will roll to the top. Savage um, one. Savage one. Will, if he crossed him early, would hold the front. But I drawn alongside each other. I don't know that he would cross. Um, I can't see. Even if Falcon Trader continues to pull the pressure on out wider, I can't see Filthy Habits giving away the front as a free rolling type. Not that it would matter because they'd still be free rolling because Savage One does it anyway. I'm assured Filthy Habits will go around again next week as well, provided Tough he pulls horse, up fine habits. today. Tough horse. Back to back to back. Just keeps going around. Um, and even Mountain Ash uh, could come looking for a forward spot and probably wouldn't find one if he did. Um, they've gone back before from wide gates. They're, they're weird. 
Um, uh, West River Miracle sits on them. Playhouse Patron, depending on how he jumps, can be close enough. Sensational will spot them a start again. Cisco Joe will potentially not be allowed to run because they scratched for the wet track last week and they said, you're not allowed to run on heavy eights in future then, so he'll probably come out, but he'd be back anyway, so it won't affect the speed. Probably be a good thing to come out because he's not suited to being in 72 plus grade, but his first that run was very good. Um, Sensational gets genuine tempo here rather than the sort of sit sprint nature of or last start where he came off the bridle uh, coming into the turn and then picked up and beat Falcon Trader anyway. Thanks, William. Appreciate it. Um, that was after sitting fence and run, which was the worst part of the track that day. So that was, it was a pretty good win. Um, get some, as I said, a more genuine tempo here. Gets to sit probably deep. There'll be a three-wide line, I would suggest. At this time of the day, it'll probably be the best spot coming out wide and he'll just get to let rip down the centre. I um, think he's an obvious favourite. Do I want to take three dollars twenty now? No. Happy to see what the market does. Um, beyond him, Playhouse Patron probably the only one that interested me. Um, off the freshen, he was going really well prior to his last run, and wouldn't surprise me to see him bounce back. Uh, interesting that Joey, as a party, jumps off to ride Savage One. I, I would have thought sticking with Playhouse Patron would be a better play, but that's just me. Um, and Savage One was a good grinding win last start. We'll get another wet track and enjoys the backup. Uh, Kev, Falcon Trader interests me somewhat. Uh, does in- this, interest this me. This barrier yeah. and weight relief, you know, conditions, um, I think it might get a pinch on the favourite. Um, what do you think of it? Chances yeah. Falcon um, Trader at $8. At Filthy Habits or Falcon Trader? Falcon Trader. Don't don't mention filthy China. Oh, oh, filthy habits. Um, filthy habits can win, to, but uh, to be honest, like, I had filthy habits on top. Um, Falcon Trader. No chance. Runs the same race all the time. Yeah, I think. What, what, I, don't, I don't think that same race is good enough to win a seventy-two plus mile. And I don't. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think. Bit of a one better, to, but doesn't the map work for a one better here? Well, I mean, I Who? think Filthy Habits is a bit of a, a better one, better. No? Fair. Fair enough. Yep. But Fair back cool. back to a mile, what do you think of that, too? Um, I think it's just because he wants no to run it three race. weeks in a row and there's no staying race this week. This literally feels like the staying race of the card. I spoke to Brandon Fury today. He said, finally got him to try last week. He actually came back with a heart rate above 110. So. The, the Him or the horse? There. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he would have been too worried up the straight. To be fair, the horse was fighting them off well. I mean, I I don't know how to read that race last week. It feels like nothing else. Bizarre else race, it. wasn't it, Kev? Bizarre no- race. Nothing else handled the track at all. Like Emerald Trader, yep. God, he went well, didn't he? Cand- Candlelight Supper, who is a noted slop enthusiast, didn't even look to get through it. That's it how it was. And Phil with the habits just. I mean, ran incredibly slow, but just handled it that much better. And I I don't see if we get that rain again on Saturday, whether or not we even get to this race on the card is another question. But, um, look, I had filthy habits on top. Um, I didn't know about that Cisco Joe situation, so take that out um, because I was looking for him again. Probably just wait till he gets on a dry deck, I suppose. Um, so I don't. I, I think it's because Cup Night didn't go on the wet at all. But Cup Night wasn't by Vital Equine. No, it wasn't. So I don't know. But what can you do? Yeah, he's um, showing himself in the foot now because I'll never let him do it again. <laughs> all right, I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, yep. Best on the card, uh, Toby. Anyone that wants your information, though, you can obviously uh, click Cop a link. Dollars. Cough up about a dollar a race, really. Over I mean, the good it's, stuff. It's, oh, seriously, it's, it's it's unbelievable the amount of information you get uh, for what you actually fork out. Like you can get Toby's early information, late information, and staking and dirt plan, information. and dirt information all through the week. For if you just boil it down to a Saturday race, it's about a dollar a race. Like it's just absurd. Uh, so. 
There will be a link in this video for that information. Uh, I won't ask you for your uh, best bets, but I will ask you, Kev. Uh, race number one, smooth mover. Very, very keen on his chances. Um, and race number eight, search and rocks. If it finds the front, I think it's all over. She takes it out. Um, are you looking forward to Broom Cup Day on Saturday, Toby? I am looking forward to Broom Cup Day. Now, technically, there are three meetings in Western Australia on Saturday. One of them is Kununurra, which is pretty much exclusively Northern Territory horses, and it's on grass. So I will not be setting any bets for that. Um, but when Broom, I, said I, it, when I, when I did say a dollar a race, I was including the uh, Wednesday and the out wide meetings uh, inclusive for that. And I, I said to you last week, You've got to start taking track of your dirt betting because it's just it's just ludicrous. You have a massive bet on something at the dirt and it just lobs at two dollars twenty, two dollars eighty every time. It's crazy. It took a hit it took a hit through the week when Marchin didn't go at all for the first five hundred meters at Carnarvon and then Christo Happens. produced one of the greatest rides of all time to get five wide from barrier four in a field of seven. Um, that was That's fresh hard after. To do. That's hard. That to was do. fresh after he proper carved one up the race before. Oh, um, so you're, yeah, not yeah, singing, you're not singing. singing from the same hymn sheet of Tom Percy, are you? No, no, I think Tom <laughs> Percy should get a life. And so we're we're going to go allegedly. into rogue. We're, we're going to go allegedly. into rogue rogue areas where you're going to lean onto Kev to get out the violin. So uh, uh, my best bet on uh, Belmont is race eight. Search and rocks. Uh, let's hope it finds the front and it's proper wet and it, it's ready first up and it just wins. Uh, nice. So thanks, thanks for watching, guys, and um, good luck, good punning. Cheers, guys. Appreciate Thank it. You.